On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Paul's going to show us a couple ways to add security to WPF apps. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Paul Sheriff. Hey, Paul. Hey, Robert. How are you? Great. Welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's been many years. It's good to be back. Yeah. Paul and I have known each other for a very, very long time, so um, I'm glad that that you had an, an opportunity to come on the show and talk to us about adding security to WPF applications. Well, I've been doing a lot of WPF lately uh, with a client and uh, we had to add this in and I'd written this years ago. So it was kind of nice to actually come back around and, and uh, kind of clean it up for the latest stuff lately. So it's been nice. Cool. It's kind of an, it can be an important topic, but I can imagine it's not necessarily intuitive how to get started doing it. Would you agree not with really, that? Because unlike the web apps that Microsoft kind of includes it right out of the box, right. there's nothing for WPF. So it's basically roll your own. And you wrote an article about this uh, that was in a recent issue of Code Magazine. We'll put a link to that that has the full write up as well as the code. Um, but here I thought you could give us kind of a, a quicker and not dirtier because it's the same code, but a quicker overview of how it all works. What do you think? That sounds like a good idea. Let's jump into it. All right, let's do it. Well, I thought, Robert, it might be important to start out with the goals of why you need a security system. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the major goals are really just let's make controls disappear, right? Hit, hide them or collapse them. Let's make some other controls might need to be disabled. Uh, you might want some to be read only. Um, and I think the major goal, which we're going to get to, is do all these this without having to recompile code. Yes. Right. So that would be the ideal. So we're going to kind of build up to that. But I thought I'd take you through a little screen. So I made a little screen here where we've got a new button. We've got some, you know, employee data and then we got a save button. And maybe we want to hide that new button. We want to disable the employee ID. Maybe we want to hide the salary text box, disable the SSN and maybe disable the save button. So I thought I'd kind of show you going through basically securing this form. We're going to do it a couple of different ways because I've got a couple of different techniques and I'll point out the good and the bad of each one of those. So here we are in Visual Studio and I wrote a little sample app and we'll give you a link to this as well so you'll be able to download this exact sample. I've, I've got four samples for you, four or five actually. Now here's a so, question first. Uh, are you relying on any particular version of the .NET framework or any particular version of Visual Studio here? You know, I'm not. I've used this sample for many, many years. Okay. Um, it's it's written using the latest, so Visual Studio 2019, but it should work fine in just about anything. Okay. Yeah, good question, though. All right, so what I've done in this one, you can see that screen has popped up, but notice that the salary box is gone, that the SSN is disabled, and the save button is disabled. And I thought I'd show you just a little bit about what I'm doing here. So underneath in the loaded event for the window loaded, you can see on line 22, I call this set security principle. And one of the things you typically want to do when you're doing Windows security, and I'm just using the Windows security right now. So built-in roles, whatever you have set up or groups, uh, AD groups. You could also do your own generic principle here if you wanted to. But it's important to set that principle into the thread. Once you've done that, I've got... As you can see on line 25, I'm calling a view model because this is WPF, so MVVM, mm -hmm. and view model dot secure controls. And if we take a look, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the current principle, and then I'm going to just use the is in role method. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. And we can check to see if a user is in the user's role, maybe the administrator's role, the supervisor role. And all I'm doing is I'm tying that to some properties here is in user's role, is in admin role, is in supervisor role. So I've got some different properties up here that you can see. I'm simply doing the raise property changed. So I've got those three. I also added a couple other ones because I said, hey, maybe I want to be in a user's or supervisor role or is in admin or is in supervisor role. And that's basically the amount of code that I have for this particular sample. Now, let's take a look at my main window here. And what I've done is I've simply used a user control called employee control. And this is that control that I showed you on the slides. So you can see that here. But let's take a look at the XAML because this is where everything happens here. 
So down here in the XAML on that new button, I have a visibility property and look at the path. Oh, Am I in nice. the users or supervisor role? And then I'm using a converter for the, the visibility converter, of course. So each one of these, visibility is read only. The uh, Down here, we've got the is admin role, the is supervisor role for each control that you want to secure, you simply bind it up to a property. Did you have to write that converter, the visibility? That's a built-in WPF converter. It comes okay. with it. All I had to do was make cool. a resource out of it. That's All right. very, very simple to do. Okay. There's some problems with this. Let's talk about those problems before I show you how we fix it. So instead, what we want to do is map a table in a database to a set of security objects. So here I've got a table with an element identifier such as new button, employee ID, salary. Those match up to that user control that we saw. I have a mode, which could be collapsed, read-only, hidden, disabled. And those are the modes that we have in WPF. And then the role. So if the user is in one of these roles, this common delimited list, then we're not going to collapse it. We're not going to make it read-only. We're not going to make it hidden. Otherwise, it would be. So we're going to take the data out of this table. We're going to map it into a list of what I call security control objects. So we've got each one of those fields is mapped up to each property. And then we're going to use that to apply to this screen. And the way we do that is we simply match up the element identifier to each button's name or maybe a tag property. So I wanted to give us a couple of, kind of give us some flexibility so we could map up the element identifier to the name or the tag. And all we have to do then is once we have that list of security control objects, we loop through the controls on the form find that form, and then we either set it disabled or collapsed or whatever it says to do. So let's take a look at how we do that. Okay. So what I've done now, Robert, is I've taken and I've broken out things into a couple of different projects. I have a WPF security project, and this will make it easier for the users when they download this to be able to take this DLL and put it right into their application. I also did create, in this particular instance, I created this security control class that we saw that has those various properties, container name, element identifier, mode. And all we're going to do is map this from SQL Server to here, eventually. What I'm going to do for right now, just to keep things really simple, and let's see if I can find this. I apologize. There we go. Is I'm going to go ahead right now and just hard code this in. So just so we can see what this looks like, and then we'll just take it from the database in the next one. But okay. here you can see. Because I was cool. going to, it did look like you were hard coding that, and if you made any changes to who got to do what, you'd have to recompile the code. But this is an interim step. Exactly. All right, and it perfect. really just makes it easier for me to explain how we yep. get from step B, step A to step B, right? Right. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing is, again, I've got the container name, which is our employee control. So you can see the employee control right here. Okay, we have the element identifier, which is the new button or the employee ID, and then what the mode is going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, and oops, don't click on those. What the mode's going to be, and then the roles as a string. And I made this one users123, and then we're going to go ahead and run this. I'll show you what it looks like first, and then we're going to just step through the code really quickly. This is not a lot of code. All right, so you can see the new button is gone. Okay. If I then come back here and I change this to users, I should be in the users role on my machine. It comes Excellent. back. Yeah. All right. Now, let's take a look, because what's important now is I got rid of all of those bindings. Mm-hmm. Okay, no visibility, no read-only. All of those are just gone, aren't they? Okay, so that's great. So that means all we're doing now is we're matching it up on the name or maybe a tag element if I'm using a tag like right down here. Yep. All right, so now let's go ahead and step through this, and we'll see how this works. So I'll set a breakpoint right here. So I changed the secure controls from last time because I need to pass in an instance, right? This instance of this uh, particular form because I need to be able to go through the controls in that form, don't I? Yes. To match those up. Excellent. And I've called it employee control because I may have more than, you know, one or two or three or ten different forms, and I want to be able to have one table and be able to specify which form I'm on so we know which set of controls to get. All right. Hopefully that's clear as mud. 
<laughs> All right, so let's drive into this. So we come into this secure controls. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the current principle. I'm going to call this load controls to secure. And this is where we're going to now jump into that one that we just built, right? That has the hard coded values. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we're going to go through, and I'm just going to use a little bit of WPF code to grab all the controls in the container. And we can take a look at this. I'll let you kind of look at this in more depth later. But all it is is a recursive call to loop through and grab all of the different objects. And I'm going to create a list, basically, of all of the controls that are on this particular screen. And one of the key things I'm doing here is I'm going to check to see whether we should consider this control that I just grabbed for security. So that means that it either has to have a control name or a tag name, right? The name property or the tag name has to be set. Okay. Because okay? if not, I don't have any way to match it up to those controls, do I? So I would need to make sure those are there. And then as you can see, I'm going to go through and look for any child objects, and I'm going to recursively call this until we're all done. When I'm all done, set a breakpoint here, I now have a list of those controls that either have a name or a tag property, and there's only five of them. And if we look, those are the okay. ones that we saw that I want to now connect up to, right? The new button, the employee ID, the salary, the social security number, the save button. All right. So now all I'm going to so do... So do you find that you typically use name or tag? Because if you're ever going to reference a control in code, you'll wind up naming it, but it may not need to be secured, right? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. Boy, I'd like to remind my straight man for today. <laughs> the last sample that I have is if you don't want to set the name or the tag, but you have a binding, we can do it on the binding as well, but that's a lot more code. So I wanted to start out this way first, and then yeah. later I'll show you how to actually do it with a binding. So you don't even have to have the name or the tag property. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Nice straight man there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go through and I'm going to look now for that element identifier and see if I found it in that control. Hey, I did. Great. So now that I found it, all I have to do now is check to see, hey, let's loop through the roles now. And am I in one of those roles? Okay. And if I am, I skip it. I don't have to do anything. Let's then go to the next control. We're going to search for that one. We found it. Now we're going to check and say, hey, are, am I in any one of those roles? Oops, I'm not. So this control that we're on, which is the employee ID, okay, what mode am I going to do? Read only. Okay. So we come into this method that I call change state. And all I'm doing is checking to see what came from that mode, right? That disabled, the read only. And I'm going to then set the appropriate thing. So in read only, I'm going to set the is enabled equal to true and the visibility to true, and then I'm going to change what? The is read-only property. Okay, so I'm taking from whatever it was before, making sure it's wiped out, and then I'm going to apply whatever it was. I'm using just a little bit of reflection here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm using a little reflection, but this is the quick way to do it when you do the set value. Okay, this is the way the entity framework does it, not the old way, so this is very efficient to do. And I'm going to set that controls is read-only property to true. So we just do this for every single control, and when we're done, I hit F5 here, everyone's been set to whatever those security permissions are. All right. Now, that's the first thing. Now, the next one we're going to do, right? So now what we're going to do is we want to take that data and get it out of SQL Server. So we're not going to hard code it anymore. So what we'll do is we'll have a security control.sql file. And what I've done is I've simply created that little table that I showed you in that screenshot in the slides. And I've also given you this sample data here. Mm -hmm. So I created this in my SQL Server. And you will create this as well in order to get this particular application to work. Now, the way that this works is I had to change a couple of things. So first off, the load controls to secure is no longer hard-coded. As you can see now, I'm using a class called Security Control Manager and it has get security controls. If we go over to this particular guy here, I'm simply using a little entity framework code. I've got a security context, a DB context set up called WPF security DB context. And I'm going out to grab the data from that security control table. That's mm -hmm. what gives me my control list. 
All right. Then after that, everything else is pretty much the same. Let's go ahead, set our breakpoint again. We'll go ahead and run. And the nice thing about this is you now don't have to look through every single control in the form. You already know what the list of controls is, right? That's true, because you you wrote the form, right? So you okay. know which things yep. you want to secure up. So all you're doing is going into the SQL Server database and adding or taking away controls right. based on what you need. All right, so if we take a look, the code for the secure controls, exactly the same. The only difference is this particular method here, the load controls to secure, goes to the database now. It then loads up the controls in XAML. It then loops through all the code. Same exact code. Isn't that nice? So we just switched from the hard-coded version now to the database version. Excellent. All right. So now we don't have to redistribute anything. Now we can just change something in our database. But there's one more thing. It's what you asked about earlier, Robert. So it's if we take a look at now, if you don't want to set the name or you don't want to set the tag, I added one more bit of code on, and I'll show you the, the little changes that I had to make here. And if we take a look at my user control, and again, we'll look at the XAML. Okay, so now you can see on the button, okay, um, whoop, I did still have it in there, I apologize, but uh, if the button doesn't have any bindings, I do need a name. Okay, now look, no name or tag on the text box, there's just the binding employee okay. ID. That employee ID has that same exact identifier, and I can use that. Same thing with first name or last name. So I've gotten rid of name or tag when I can, okay? And if you don't want to use name because you don't want to have it show up in you know your code behind, you can always use the tag as well because remember that's still there as well. Okay. That's an option. All right. So it just depends on what you want to. You have an option of name, tag, or binding. What do you typically use more often than not in, in real life? I try to use the binding because normally I'm trying to bind something that you know I'm trying to secure something that is bound. Okay. Okay. But for buttons, right? Because sometimes I don't want it, some I don't want some user to save a button or click on that save button. They can't mm -hmm. save. That's one of their permissions that they don't have. Then I have to use name or tag. Okay. Now, if you think about it, the name I usually have a click event associated with this, so I typically have a name on it anyway because I want a nice name to show up for the click event. Right. Okay. So now cool. let's take a look at a couple of little things that I added here. Okay. So one of the things is when I go into the secure controls here and I load the controls, that hasn't changed, the load controls in the XAML container. So if we scroll down here, this most of this code is the same, but I marked it out right here, begin new code. This is the only new code I, am, I added. So in this one, I have a method called get binding names. So I'm going to pass in the control as we're looping through the set of controls on the form, right, or on the... I'm going to say, take this control, and let's go find out what the binding property is. So this is all the code I had to write to actually figure out. So I had to figure out code by code, or I had to figure out control by control which value would have that bound property. And then I grab that property, and I can then get the binding expression. This is built huh. into WPF. Cool. So once I have that binding expression, I can get the path and remember what the path is we go back here the path yep. is that yep and that's what i can next table right there was just one more thing that i had to do and it's this line of code immediately after the new code i added get binding name it's that consider for security if you remember before we considered a control to be securable if it had a name or a tag property right mm -hmm. well now as you can see i had to add one more is there a binding path Okay. So if it has a binding path, a control name, or a tag, we can consider this for security. And that's it. That's all the changes we had to make. So we now have accomplished our goals. We can make any control read-only. We can make it uh, hidden. We can make it collapsed. We can do disabled. And we can do it all from a database table and with just a little bit of code. And I've given you a nice class library that you'll be able to drop this right into your application. Very, very cool. Do you have you tried this in uh, UWP? Um, you know, I, know I haven't, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work exactly the same way. I guess it depends on do you have the same ability to read the paths and dig down into the controls, right? 
the binding expression might be yeah. the only thing that might be a little bit different under UWP. Everything else should be the same because we're right. just using the reflection there, and that's still available in UWP. So. Yeah, and then you have the same question of how would you do this in something like Xamarin? Um, <laughs> yeah, that could be maybe a little bit more difficult. I'm not sure you have all that those expressions. So right, yeah. But there you go. Easy way, I think, to secure your WPF app. Very, very cool. Right. So the all of these samples and the full article, um, we'll put links to in the show notes so people can go try this out themselves. Absolutely. And thank you so much for coming on and showing us this, Paul. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. And we'll see you again soon. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Thank you.